What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 266 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast. The first edition of the new year, 2017, is upon us. Hopefully you guys all had a very happy, safe holiday season. Your New Year's resolutions have not been thrown into the trash yet, and here's hoping that you also have a great 12 months coming ahead of you. This is the Hot Tags edition for the week, where I'm going to be breaking down some of the current events, rumors, news, and anything else really important or interesting going on in the world of professional wrestling from the past few days. We actually have a little bit of carryover from the week before that, but honestly, there wasn't really all that much interesting happening. I uh, Earlier, even today, I was sitting there thinking to myself, damn, I don't think I'm going to have many Hot Tags this week. But of course, a couple other things happened, and I think I'm going to be able to stretch this out just a little bit. So we're doing this Tuesday night on the 3rd of January, if you're listening to this a little bit later on in the week. Hopefully, if anything interesting happened, I've got enough time to be able to do a small package or to just talk about it on the comments or anything else like that. Maybe carry that over into next week, depending on what it is. But we've got five different topics that I've written down so far from the past few days that I wanted to go over a little bit. One of them is not really WWE related, but it kind of is. Todd Grisham, former WWE announcer, has signed with UFC. He is somebody who we've ragged on in the past quite a bit. We've made fun of him because he was never really the most, uh, let's say, passionate. That's a good word. The most passionate person in his career. He was a commentator for a little bit on ECW, and he was really just shitty. I mean, we always pinpoint that one spot where Christian returned, and instead of being real bombastic and enthusiastic about it like he should and like anybody reasonably would, he basically went, hey, that's uh, that's Christian. So here's hoping for UFC, he's a much better analyst, and he ends up having a little bit more vigor to him. I don't really know. I haven't been checking out anything that Todd Grisham's done. I know he's been working with the ESPN for a while. So if that's something he's more interested in, I'm sure he'll be more interesting to listen to. But in either way, as much as we do make fun of Todd Grisham and stuff, it's kind of cool to see a guy continue to stick around with his job career choice. And if he is going to do well at that, awesome. If he's not going to do well, I'm sure that they'll figure out another way. But here's hoping the best for him, right? It's 2017. Let's not be too negative here. Uh, But unfortunately, we do have to talk about a negative story. Although, I don't know, maybe it's a positive thing if you're looking at it from a different perspective. All sort of depends. But all charges against Jimmy Snuka have been dropped. His case is going to be ending now, that whole murder court drama that was happening. It's basically due to his health. And we've heard a lot about this over the past couple of months. Everything in regards to this was that he wasn't fit to stand trial. And it seems like maybe that's the indicator that they just decided, fuck it, who cares? At this point, there's like almost not really a statute of limitations, but kind of in a way, you sort of get the impression that everybody knows that he did it. Although if there's no proof, then he might not necessarily be guilty of that. And at this point, are you going to really punish a guy who is in that failing of health? I don't know the legalities behind this. I, of course, don't know exactly what happened with the whole murder trial and all the little ins and outs and stuff like that. But if it is a case where they're just saying he's too old, he's too in poor in uh, too poor of shape to be able to be punished and that they think that he did it and stuff like that, that's kind of shitty to get away with that because he spent the past couple of decades just kind of being fine and he should have been locked up in prison. That being said, if he was innocent of this, it's kind of shitty to have him drag through the court system over and over and over again, particularly for being in bad health. So I guess it all sort of depends on what the actual truth behind the situation is, and that's kind of tough for us to judge. So in either way, if this is a situation where a positive uh, comes out of it because an innocent man no longer has to sit through all this kind of crap, cool. If it's on the more negative side and you've got this guilty guy who's just kind of getting around it because he's too old to really seek the punishment for his crimes, then that sucks. Either way, let's move on to a more positive thing here. WWE's Bring It to the Table was a brand new show that just premiered this Monday after Monday Night Raw. It is something very similar to Smack Talk in a couple different ways, but it's got a different side of it too. It's got Peter Rosenberg from ESPN. And on this edition, at the very least, Paul Heyman and JBL were on it. I don't know if they're going to be the two that are always on it or not, but I imagine that they would switch people in and out here and there. They also, as far as I'm aware, didn't say that this was going to be a weekly thing, so I don't know if this is going to be something that they're going to do 
maybe like every other week, every other month, or if this is going to be like just once every once in a while, I hope it's every week or at least bi-weekly, because I actually like this quite a bit, so we're going to just break down a little bit of the review here. I don't want to spoil absolutely everything, but I'm going to treat this basically as you've listened to it or you probably won't mind if I tell you some of the things they say. One of the topics that they addressed was Raw being three hours, and JBL pointed out that it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense based off of the money that they're earning. He said that WWE makes $173 million on the TV revenue side, 137 on the network, 106 million on live events, and then under 50 million for everything else, which I'm assuming is merchandise and little side deals that they've got going on, you know, with like tap out and the little promotional things like that. But that in itself was pretty interesting to hear about because that shows the different disparities between the network, the TV stuff, the live events, etc. That's actually a lot more for the live events that I would have imagined them actually being able to accomplish. I would have thought that that would have been maybe around the, the 50, 70 range. So all the arguments I've made over the years that the live events probably should be toned down a little bit. Well, they're making a hundred million dollars on there. They shouldn't stop the live events. That's for sure. 137 million on the network, 173 million on the TV revenue side. You know, that one extra hour of Raw probably does make quite a bit of a difference. So as much as I would agree with Rosenberg when it came to his points of view of it being a little bit harder to watch, I can sort of see why WWE would go, well, fuck it. Who cares if it's a little harder for you to watch? We want to make that extra $20 million or whatever it is. And at that point, we have the option of fast forwarding and watching it on DVR. We have the option of going and doing something else at the time or just sitting through it and dealing with it or sitting through it and bitching. So that's another thing that they were saying. Fans bitch and complain a lot, which is kind of a poor attitude, I think. But it also is kind of right. We do bitch and complain all the time. That's basically the majority of what happens on Smack Talk, more so than on the positive, let's, you know, pat this thing on the back kind of a thing. But it's also something that I think is kind of a cop-out to say, oh, people bitch and complain all the time and their opinions are invalid. They aren't. Just because they complain a lot doesn't mean that Sometimes those complaints are true. If you look at it as something where it's constructive criticism, you should always take constructive criticism. Now, when you've got the people that bitch and complain, and it's no matter what, they just want to complain, kind of like the ones that will boo a baby face just because they think that it's cool instead of not liking them, or because the baby face did something like the heel did, you're in a different argument there. Then I can totally justify doing that whole throw out the idea that people uh, bitch and complain and those fans are pointless. But when you lump everybody as a fan that complains together as, well, they're not actually boycotting, so they're just kind of kind of talking out their ass, that's the mentality that I think a Paul Heyman shouldn't have because then they're going to stop paying attention to the people that are voicing legitimate concerns. So hopefully that's just Paul Heyman kind of hamming it up a little bit, and it's not some actual behind-the-scenes thing, because if that's the case, then we have a reason to believe why they keep doing the same shit over and over again, because they can listen to 100 people complain, and they can go, well, 100 of those people are pointless, as opposed to, well, 60% of those people, or whatever the case may be. Another thing that they talked about was, why is Bret Hart mad all the time? I thought that that was great. JBL pointing out just like, why are you bitching all the time? Because Bret Hart does seem like he is mad all the time. And in ways that don't necessarily concern him. A lot of people, of course, are going to interview him and they're going to be asking him questions about the normal stuff that's going on now because everybody wants to know his opinions about modern stuff, not just repeating the same stories about Greg the Hammer Valentine and shit. But... Bret Hart does seem to have a chip on his shoulder constantly, so it was cool to see JBL pointed out that. As far as I know, J uh, Bret Hart has not mentioned anything in retaliation for that, although I assume if he does tweet about it, it'll be like, I didn't see that fucking show, and it's garbage anyway, and I never liked JBL, you know, one of those things. Finally, the last topic that they talked about that I wanted to just sort of mention here, there's a couple other ones, I don't want to spoil everything, was should Hulk Hogan come back? And it seemed like the general consensus was, we want to see him back, he should come back, he suffered enough, kind of, but he's also going to have to deal with these negative repercussions the whole rest of his life, 
and in a way, maybe that's bad enough, etc., etc., which is sort of the opinions that we've been talking about for the past bunch of months. Actually, the past over a year now it's been, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if that's what you guys agree with or not. Leave your comments below. Tell me what you think. But one other thing to talk about here with Hulk Hogan was there was a fan dressed up as Hulk Hogan that was forced to move his seat. He was sitting on the camera side, the front row of Monday Night Raw, and he ended up having the move, which I disagree with. If WWE has somebody who's holding up a sign that says, I don't know, uh, I'm a neo-Nazi, then yeah, okay, you're going to want to take that sign away. Or if somebody's causing too much of a distraction, or if they're uh, doing something that is pretty much just morally reprehensible, then I can see you doing anything as far as moving them, kicking them out, forcing them to change their gear, whatever it might be. But that dude didn't seem to be causing a problem. He was just dressed up like Hulk Hogan. And if Hulk Hogan is somebody that you can't even dress up as for a show, it's a wrestling show. I mean, you should be able to dress up for anybody like that, but then they're never going to bring him back because at that point, you wouldn't want to have any association with Hulk Hogan, right? So you shouldn't mention Hulk Hogan on anything. You shouldn't have had them talk about it and bring it to the table. If you want to kind of act like he doesn't exist and you don't want that fan to get the full value of his ticket because he paid for that seat specifically, you got to sort of give him the benefit of the doubt here and just kind of go, well, you know what? We're a wrestling show. He's dressed up as a wrestler. He could be dressed up as a fucking character from Stranger Things and we shouldn't tell him that he can't do it. Now, you can't wear a mask. That's one thing. Just for safety issues, that makes sense. And you can't bring in, like, weapons and, you know, stuff like that. But I would assume dressing up as Hulk Hogan should be perfectly fine. And I think that that's kind of bullshit if they moved him just for that reason. Now, if he caused some sort of a scene, it's a different story. I don't remember seeing anything like that happening. I don't remember anything being reported about that. But... I would argue in the case of he should sit right there with his seat and at the very, very most, they should have told him, look, we don't really want people dressed up as Hulk Hogan anymore. How about you change? We'll give you a bunch of free gear, you know, a t-shirt. That's who's your favorite guy right now. And he says, I don't know, Braun Strowman. All right, we'll give you a Braun Strowman t-shirt for free. Take off the Hulk Hogan stuff in the bathrooms. You can go do that. And then, you know, we'll let you uh, keep the shirt and stuff and have a great show. That would be the better way to uh, handle that to me. You don't move a guy out of his seat and have him get a shittier seat just because, you know, you don't like what he's wearing. That's kind of stupid. Last thing for us to talk about here, we're going to end things off on a positive note here. Oh, which, by the way, I just wanted to, I don't remember if I said it, but with Bring It to the Table, go check it out. I actually like it quite a bit. This is going to get my thumbs up. Uh, last thing, though, to talk about here is the Diamond Dallas Page rumor. He might be going into the Hall of Fame this year. The only rumor that I've been hearing for the past couple of months, at the very least, was that Goldberg would go in. And it makes sense. You know, Goldberg going in, he's got a lot of stuff that he's been doing lately. But if he doesn't go in this year, wouldn't be too shocked either, because he's probably going to be wrestling at WrestleMania. And I don't know if they would want to put a Hall of Famer in the WrestleMania card like that. They might wait until next year. That's the better option, I think. DDP, though, he's not going to be wrestling. We know that. But we did actually make an appearance in that Andre the Giant Battle Royal last year, so I don't really know. I would assume not, but DDP is on that list of guys that they could have brought in at any time. Doesn't need to be specifically in that area, but Orlando, Florida, you've got a little bit of a close connection to the Atlanta, Georgia section, and there always was that disparity between the South and the North for WWE and WCW. So that's close enough in the area. You can justify it either way. I mean, you don't have to do area based people and DDP is definitely worthy of a hall of fame class. He was great in WCW kind of sucked in WWE, but we have people in there that were great in NWA. We have people that were in there for new Japan. So it's not a WWE specific thing. Diamond Dallas page has been doing some great stuff with Jake, the snake and Scott Hall and, he seems like he would be a great ambassador going forward, so having him as a Hall of Famer, only positives from my end. I think that it makes a lot of sense. If he's the top, top guy for this whole Hall of Fame class, that'll be a little bit disappointing. But at the same time, it's not going to be the worst class ever. So he has my full support. DDP is a great person to go into the Hall of Fame. I would like to hear some new names rumored around now, I think. 
but we have a couple of months, so we might not be able to hear anything else over the next couple of weeks or so. I want to know what you guys think about that, though. Who do you think should go into the Hall of Fame this year? Is DDP one of your candidates, or should he wait? Should he not go in there at all? Who else would you like to see? What do you think about Todd Grisham signing with UFC? What's your stance on the Jimmy Snuka situation and the Hulk Hogan fan and Hulk Hogan coming back to WWE? And did you check out Bring It to the Table? What do you think about that? Is that a show that should be continuing weekly, bi-weekly? Did you hate it and you don't want to see it come back anymore? Whatever the case may be, drop your comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button as well to like the video. Give us a little bit of juice on the SEO side of things. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SmartOutMoment. Keep checking SmartOutMoment.com for more things coming your way throughout the next week. And a couple of things that are going to be coming for sure are, at the very least, we've got the Ask Him and the Rest Hold coming up next on this channel. We also have the One to Watch and the Future Endeavors forecast for 2017, where we're going to be talking about the superstars that are probably going to leave the company in whatever capacity, whether they're released or they're quitting or they're retiring or you know anything like that, versus with the one to watch. That's the section where we talk about the breakout stars that we think are going to happen this year, which wrestlers are going to end up really boosting their credibility in whatever way that we are going to justify it. Those are going to be coming up towards the weekend. We're actually going to record that most likely Friday night. And we might be doing Friday recordings as a regular thing going forward to try to incorporate some more people onto the panel. Because I know full well the same things that you guys have been saying are the same things that I've got in my head where the solo episodes are just not as good. They're not as fun as the other ones. But Hot Tags might be sticking with this Tuesday, Wednesday sort of uh, gimmick going forward. I don't know. We're still trying to figure some stuff up when it comes to the scheduling and stuff. But I want to thank you all nonetheless for checking this out and for checking out everything else that you guys are going to be uh, participating in in whatever fashion it is. We've got that stuff coming up later on this week. But for now, with these Hot Tags, that's going to be it. This has been another Smart Out moment, and I'm being counted out. Ah!